Lady Elgin was a wooden hulled steamship that was chartered for a simple round trip. September 7th, 1860, it was to leave Milwaukee, carrying somewhere between four or 600 individuals. It was supposed to go to Chicago, a day's event there. Most were wanting to see the whole Democratic convention. Presidential candidate Stephen Douglas was going to be given a great speech. And then late that night, they would all return home and everything went as scheduled. About midnight, it departed from Chicago. Even though rough weather and winds were predicted, a small storm coming in, a ship this size should make its way back to Milwaukee without any problems. Unfortunately, around 2.30 a.m., another small schooner carrying lumber rammed the Lady Elgin in the side. The small schooner was able to make its way to Chicago, crippled but intact. Meanwhile, within a half hour, the Lady Elgin would sink. 300 lives would be lost, just two miles offshore in the midst of the turbulent wind and the waves that picked up. By the time daybreak arose, news started to travel along the edge of Lake Michigan. So many people started to rush down and see who they could help. And there's where the story started taking place. There was a, a young student named Edward Spencer part of Garrett Biblical College next to Northwestern University who had gone out with many others to see in the dark of night who they could save and what they could do. And this young man, over the next four hours, going back and forth in the wind and the waves, was credited for saving 17 individuals that he found adrift on certain objects, kicked his way back, brought him to shore, only to go back and return and grab another life. It was 40-some years after that event in a Q&A, a time of commemorating a great statue and a plaque that would be on the side of Lake Michigan for the heroic men and women that lended themselves to the life-saving effort, that he was talking about what happened in the midst of the night, how he and his brother heard the screams and yells of those that made their way to shore, and how they decided just to give their lives going back and forth at whatever the cost. And in the Q&A portion, he was simply asked, what sticks out the most about that night? And with a pause and a deep breath, he simply told the audience, not a single person has ever come back and said thank you. <laughs> of all the lives that my brother and I reached that are friends from Northwestern and Garrett Biblical College all spent that early morning hours going back and forth. To my knowledge, he said, not a single person has ever come back and simply said thank you. That's what sticks out the most about that fearful night. To date, still the greatest tragedy that's ever happened on the open waters of Lake Michigan. A year later, laws were passed that now all open water boats had to have lights on them. But for this guy and that incredible act, that's what sticks out the most. The lack of thankfulness. <laughs> you would think with all those lives, someone would have made the journey back. Some father or mother, some family would have made the journey back just to say, I want to simply say thank you for those that gave of themselves. It's no wonder when we start this new Daily Dose week, just looking at thankfulness, looking at gratitude. This verse we have to start with then. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Be joyful always. <laughs> That's a singular verse. Be joyful always. So you see, happiness can come and go, but choosing to be joyful, well, that's a choice. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good? So many times, Christians, we try to figure out what is God's will for my life. And what we mean is, what do I do with my time or my job, my money, my resources, a relationship, an opportunity I may have? We try to figure out God's will, but the stuff that is clearly printed is God's will. Be joyful always. How? By praying continually and giving thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Maybe this season before trying to figure out all the things that we don't know what God's will is, we should get back to what we do know. You know how to be a person of joy? Constantly be giving thanks in prayer. You can't have a positive life if you're focused on the negative, can you? And maybe this is why in 1 Thessalonians, Paul writes to one of the churches he plants and says, let me tell you how to be people of joy. Give thanks in every situation. 
Yeah, it's tough times. Yeah, there's things going on. Yeah, we're not doing life the way we want to do it right now. But here's what I'm going to tell you. There's still stuff to be thankful of. And when you walk around continuing with a thankful heart, you're going to be a person of joy. Why? Because your heart, your mind is set on things that you're thankful for, not on things you don't have. Start this season by being people that continually start applying times to be thankful throughout my day. And first and foremost, to a God that I wonder in Q&A time, what sticks out to you the most? I wonder if God ever says, the lack of thanks I get for all I've done to save these people. That's a great thought to get us started on a great Thanksgiving.